thank you very much. Thank you. What I want to just uh, say just before we get going, the one thing that brought Neil Hamilton down wasn't, in parliamentary terms, wasn't just the fact that he was a greedy, fucking, money-grabbing, arrogant, lying, scumbag, fuckpig, satanic chugnut of Satan himself. <laughs> but... But the fact that he didn't declare that he'd taken the money in the register of members' interests, and that's why the parliamentarians got all fucking angry about it. And I just want you to remember that before we get going, because tonight's show is all about Brussels and the European Parliament. Now, the weird thing is, with Europe, if you say to Pete, half of Britain, you say Europe, and half of Britain were quite happy to charge down to the White Cliffs of Dover, stand there in a pair of Union Jack boxer shorts and say, STOP COOKING WITH GARLIC! I CAN SMELL IT FROM HERE! FUCK OFF! <laughs> yeah, and half of Britain has this attitude, oh, I don't want to be in Europe, fuck off, I don't want to be in Europe telling me how big my sausage should be, fuck off telling me I should have meat in it instead of anything they fucking want to put in, fuck off out of it. And you say, well, you've got a few liberties and rights they've given you. I don't want liberties and rights, I don't want to know that I can get paid more money, I don't want to know I don't have to work overtime, I'm quite happy being a serf. I've always been a serf. Good enough for my father, good enough before his father before him. I've always been oppressed and that's the way we like it now. Fuck off out of it. You know, and that's the difference. Basically, if you criticise sort of the European Parliament, you're lumped in with that lot and you might as well be filmed by fucking Donald McIntyre undercover. And so, the weird thing, we decided to go over to Brussels, went to the European Parliament, and it's great. First of all, you get on the Eurostar, which is fantastic. Especially coming back. It's great, because coming back, you're in darkness, you get on the train in Brussels, and the train just goes... <laughs> goes through France, <laughs> through the tunnel, <laughs> gets to Britain, the train turns into my dad. Oh, fuck, no, blow it, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, I messed myself, fucking hell. <laughs> and it is incredible, it just sort of breaks down and has an asthma attack, you know, you expect to see the driver with a ventilator inhaler around the front of the fucking engine. <laughs> yeah, Thomas was feeling wheezy. <laughs> And the amazing thing is, oh, you know, you know how all the birds perch on the overhead wires? Right, when the train comes, they all fly away really quickly. In Britain, they don't bother doing that. Train comes along, a train, whoop. <laughs> so we get there to Brussels, and Brussels is a weird, the European Parliament is a weird building, because it's all chic and lovely design. We wander around, and it's just kind of, you go into these sessions, and if you sit in on the sessions, they, they go around with a tea trolley. And they serve everyone there cups of tea while they're having the debate. And I, maybe it's just me being curmudgeonly, but I was just sitting there watching this chairman going, well, it's vitally important we get the right report here because we're talking about the abduction of human beings in the Ukraine and being forced into prostitution and this... Oh, two, please. That'll be absolutely marvellous. <laughs> so I'm sitting there in this thing, and they have all the translators. And that basically, a translator could take the best speech in the world and kill it. They're good. They just say, I have a dream uh, that one day a black and a white child will... Walk together, hand in hand. Two, please, lovely, in a biscuit. <laughs> so anyway, we've, we've gone there um, to look at this thing called the Register of Members' Interests, the MEP's Register. Everything that they should declare should be in this list. So I'd like to have a look at the Register of Members' Interests, please. They said, certainly, come with us. Led round this weird, like Franz Kafka, weird cabinet of Dr. Caligari slash impressionist nightmare thing end up in this room, they said, here is the register of members' interests. I said, great, is it on the internet? Oh, no. Oh, is there a hard copy of it? I mean, can I get it, you know, on, on, on a booklet or something like that? Oh, no. I said, well, where is it? I said, they said, it's here. And there's this big cabinet. Here is the register of members' interest, and here is the guardian of the room. <laughs> and I pulled it out, and it's all these forms written in their own handwriting about what their directorships are. And I sort of flicked through and I said, there's no photocopying. I said, there's no photocopying. She said, no. No filming. I said, all right, what can I do? She said, write it down by hand. <laughs> I said, oh, silly me, I should have bought one of those medieval monks. <laughs> so I start, sit down and sort of write, start writing by hand. And I just thought, oh, fuck it, let's play. Um, what are you doing there? I'm just, uh, Hopefully scanning it in because I can't read it. I can't. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise. It's just I couldn't. Right. Okay. Well, I'll... so I can't scan. I can only... And I said, um, "Oh, can I just do a quick balance for whiteness? Because sometimes with cameras, you have to hold up a sheet of paper and hold just to check they've got the right balance for whiteness on it to check the lines on it." And she said, "Yes, you can do that." 
Oh, I could do with another balance, to be honest, Mark, yeah. All right. So, if I hold that yeah. for white, we're just yeah. doing a white balance, yeah. OK? Is that all right, so they get a, a balance on it? It's yeah? a bit yellow at the moment. Hang right. on. Okay. Is it because of the, um... The vellum. It's the what? I think it's the vellum. The vellum? I think so. OK, well, what about if you have... Is that vellum... If there's any doubt, I do want to... Yeah, no, sure. Because remember, we lost those pictures. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I don't want you to lose them, all right? So hold this. Just check again. Yeah. Because yeah. if we lose the pictures, I'm going to be really cross. Ah, uh, for sure. How long is it going to take? I don't know, because we've had a few problems with the camera. Would it help, then, if we did it like this, OK? Because this is much... Because this is quicker, and it works really easy. OK, because what we can do, then, is like that. And that should give... So I'm going to I'm going to ask you to do a blank screen. Yeah. All right. If you can just white screen it because we've had to change focus. Sure. Okay. It's just to check that the camera to get a line on the the camera and the balance. If you get over white on it, you get an exposure, which is really dreadful. And so actually, you get almost like a reverse negative effect, which kicks in and turns it into a into a vellum. So you are photographing this. We're yeah. getting a balance on I've it. I've asked you not to photograph it. We're not actually effectively photographing it because we're still in a negative on it. Yes, but still you're photographing my, uh, the documents which I've asked you not to photograph. Well, no, we're not actually photographing it because, actually, because we're still but trying to get a balance. Can't you take another piece of paper then? Pardon? Can't you take another piece of paper? Another piece of paper? Yeah. Um, I suppose we could do. What about if we hired out that house there and filmed through the window? <laughs> no? I'm sorry. Um, I'm just trying to think of a creative way around the problem. It's, it's bizarre. Public document, but you can't get to see it unless you travel to Brussels or Strasbourg, where they're in two rooms, and you have to book an appointment, and it's open from 10 till 12, and then 2 till 5. So, go home, regroup, next Monday, on the train, into Brussels, and uh, I'll go and visit this guy, it's called Jack Poos. Now, Jacques Poussis is a senior MEP. He's the guy who looks after the MEPs, keeps them in line, and then tells them off if they're naughty. He's, like, he's called a quaster. That's his official name, a quaster. And he's sort of like a cross between sort of part of a sort of head boy and a uh, trade union rep and part Jedi. <laughs> if someone in Portugal wants to see what their MEP has declared, they have to travel here to Brussels or to Strasbourg Oh, yeah. To the room that's open from ten no. o'clock till four or nine till five. Not necessary. They uh, they can uh, they can ask uh, anybody, a journalist or any any person to uh, to have a look at it, and it will be uh, the book will be opened. I said, but what happens if you're an agricultural worker in Portugal? You want to find out what your MEP is up to. You've got to travel all the way up to Brussels, book an appointment, stay in a hotel, come in the next day, write it all down, go back, come home, that's two or three days off work. He goes, no, 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 no. That is not the case. You could just phone a friend in Brussels and they would pop in and write it down for you. I was like, oh, phone a friend. <laughs> so I said, well, does that, because for me that's just ludicrous. So there's a Portuguese worker down in the field somewhere in the south. Suddenly goes, I want to find out what my MEP's up to. I, what I need is a mobile phone and a phone directory of Brussels. Just phones up, starts with A, works his way through, eventually finds one or two people who speak Portuguese. Says, hello, I'm an agricultural worker from the south of Portugal. Oh, I'm a high finance city flyer. I don't think we've got much in common. All right, bye. Eventually, by the time you've gone through to about F, right, you may be struck up a relationship, a rapport with someone. You develop that over a series of years. You become mates. You develop this bond, this love. You reciprocate gifts. Maybe olives are sent and chocolates the other way. Over a series of years, you grow to trust each other. Maybe a couple of years pass and you say, I'll pop the question. You couldn't pop into Brussels for me. Just go into the office, write it all down. They go, I'd love to help, but I'm blind. So, <laughs> and so I said to him, look, I, I, I can help solve all this. I can help solve it because we've had a team of three people in that office... Right? For three days, and they have written down every single declaration. We have come home, we have actually spent three days making it into a database, we have spent four days turning it into a website. Here we are. This is Mr. Pooge, Jacques Pooge. <laughs> it's great. It's great. His name is Jacques Pooge, and I'm sorry, I can't resist it. It's because how, how often do you go, you don't know jack shit? Well, this is, this is Jacques Pooge. <laughs> 
We are ready to launch. I have the laptop, I have the mobile phone. If you press this button, it will go live now onto the internet. Will you press the button? No. No. I have not. Uh, why should I? In so if I just press it now, I could be fined. Could be, could be. Not necessary, but could be. But I am amazed of uh, your, uh, your technology capacities in that field. Well, my, my <laughs> technology <laughs> capacities aren't that great because it kept on freezing and I think I'm just loading it onto the internet. Mm -hmm. um, I have. Actually, I have done that. So that's up on the internet. So well, I might be in trouble now because I... So would you have to report the fact that it's up there? No, no. So, so it could just be between us? It's, it's in between us. Uh, yeah, why not? Okay, all right then, we'll, we'll leave it up there if that's okay. Anyway, we haven't actually downloaded it because there's been a few problems and we've come back to Channel 4 and we said, look, we've got the website, it's all fucking exciting, we're going to bung it up. They go, oh no, you can't put it up. Why is that? Well, because you might break some laws. In France, Italy. I said, you're kidding. Come on, just put it up. They said, no, you can't put it up. I said, do you mean to say I could be arrested and extradited for this? And they said, yes, you could. I went, fucking great. <laughs> I spent half my life wearing T-shirts with free the, with somebody else's face on it. It's about time. <laughs> it's about time mine was on. So anyway... We get back on the train, Monday morning, and we've gone there because uh, they're having this big fucking meeting thing, and it's, they're having a meeting about transparency and about putting everything on the internet. And then a bloke comes up to me and says, I'm the chairman of the committee, and I understand you want to film the committee on openness and transparency. I said, that's right. He said, you can't. <laughs> just like, oh gods of absurdism, thank you. <laughs> There's Franz Kafka, Beckett and Ian Esco up in heaven going, have the absurd card, Mark, have the absurd card. So I'm sitting in the debate. Eventually the bloke comes over to me and just goes, well look, I think we might be able to get you permission to film, but I am going to have to put it to the vote to the MEPs. And I'm just like, you're going to fucking have a vote? Brilliant. So he goes up there and goes, we have got a Channel 4 film crew in uh, and we are going to have a vote if you see that it's alright for us to, to, for them to film. Those of you who have any objections, would you raise your hand? And we've won the vote. Right, we had the right to film in there. We won the vote, I think, because the patisserie trolley was going past, and they just, oh, this is a, oh, this is a, look, they're, they're cream horns in shoe pastry, very nice. So, so we, uh, as I'm coming out, we bump in to Jacques Pousse. And I said, hello, Mr. Pousse, did you get your messages? He said, what, what messages are these? I said, well, you know that you said that people should phone a friend if they wanted to know about their members' interests. He said, yes. I've put it up on the internet how friendly you are and given your phone number. <laughs> I would like to request some information. You know that you're the second voice calling? No, I didn't know that. In order to ask something like that. Answer phone. They're not taking their calls anymore. That's quite nice. Who gave you that information? Uh, Mr. Mark Thomas. Mark Thomas. There's no answer, so we can't even get through. Right. I'm trying to get the declaration of MEP's interest. Um, I'm from Ireland and I'd like some on Dana Scanlon. They're going to type them up so that I can read them. Fantastic! Top banana! No problem. We next went to visit this guy, right, called Roger Helmer. And Roger Helmer, Conservative MEP, save the pound, and he's very, no, I was elected to Brussels to fight this kind of stupidity, exactly. The reason I wanted to talk to him was this. There's a substance called phthalates, and phthalates are a plastic softener that are put into children's toys. Now, phthalates are banned in eight EU countries, right? And there's a European emergency ban on six of the ten phthalates across the whole of Europe. Helmer put in an amendment into this debate saying no to the ban. And the amazing thing was the detail he puts into all of his stuff. The scientific detail. He names all the phthalates, but not only names them. Can we put this up? He puts the binary code numbers in. 
spoke to this guy who's been studying phthalates, and I said, what's the score here? He said, the score's very simple. He said, I've been studying this stuff for three years. Either this man is a scientific genius who knows this inside out, or he has talked to industry lobbyists. Now, it's done nothing legally wrong, but... We should be able to know what lobbyists talk to what MEP, who pays the lobbyists, what industries are involved, what amendments are being put forward, what was said, what was discussed, how did they act. What um, I found really interesting here was the fact that you'd actually got the binary numbers. Now, what, yes. what are the binary numbers, if you could give us a brief explanation? Because... This is very, very precise stuff, isn't it? It is. And I'd love to tell you that I had a degree in chemistry, but unfortunately I haven't. So we would have got a lot of help on, on these technical details from the industry because we'd have discussed this both with the industry and with people who are lobbying against that aids. And this, this information here, this is the code numbers, these are the binary numbers, so that it's not just, you haven't got just the, the, the name of it here. Oh no, we've got to be absolutely specific and obviously we would use technical people from the industry to make sure that we were writing the right things down when we're in technical areas that uh, we don't uh, fully understand ourselves. This is what Greenpeace are putting out. Yes, well, I mean, it, it, it is serious scare stuff. Um, this is scaremongering, isn't it? It is scaremongering, there's no question of it. And they're saying, look, and because it's a very emotive thing, because they're children's mm. toys, yes. and it's about children, Yes. but it is ultimately about scaremongering. The whole thing has, has been very much related to scaremongering. We should try and get the emotion out of it, we should try and take a realistic look. The route we thought would have been best would be no emergency ban, but develop tests for the leaching out of phthalates from toys when they are um, used by children in the normal way. Those tests are in development and I believe will be available in a year or so. I'm going to ask you one last question, which is Greenpeace will say, does he really mean it? Has he been got at by the lobbyists? You want me to start sucking on a cat? Yes. <laughs> would, you the pussy? would you put the pussy in your mouth and that's... It doesn't taste like wine gums. <laughs> So now, if... <laughs> doesn't seem dangerous to me. So, if Greenpeace come back, I can say to them, you had the pussy in your mouth, and that was... <laughs> can I ask you when you're editing this to be very, <laughs> very <laughs> careful Sorry. Sorry. you use the words? I do beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> the cat. The cat. The yeah. cat. <laughs> that was a very discreet drawing my attention to it. I do... Do you beg your pardon? I said, do you think we should redo it? And he said, yes. And I said, well, look, I've got a plastic hair here. Will you put the hair in your mouth? And he said, yes, absolutely. So bung this, bung this thing starts chewing on it. And I said, well, thank you very much. Now I can say you've had a mouthful of hair and there's had no effect on you whatsoever. And he said, yes, you can say that. And as he was getting up to leave, he said, I've just suddenly noticed the other animal's a cockerel. <laughs> The important thing here is he freely admits that he spoke to the lobbyists. Now, the only reason we know this is because he told us. And you should remember that phthalates are actually, in tests on animals, they have actually proved that the kidneys have damaged, the livers have damaged, and it's actually had an adverse effect on genital development. So, you know, it's quite serious stuff here. And the only reason we know he talked to the lobbyists was because he told us. There are between 10 to 12 thousand lobbyists in Brussels. Ten to twelve. Twelve thousand lobbyists. That is twenty-two lobbyists per MEP. Now, a, just going into the fucking office has got to be a task. All these people going, oh, oh, come here, give you lunch, come on, give you lunch, give you lunch. Fuck off, I've got to get in, get off my leg, get fuck off. Just, this is incredible. You know, and they should be registered, they should be registered, it should be on the net, we should have all this information available to us. And what annoys me is when they say lobbyists, they don't, what it is, is you know when you see a demonstration that goes a bit naughty and they point to someone and go, this person is the ringleader. Blah, 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 professional demonstrator. And it's like, prof they put the word professional there. Like it means they have another agenda working here. They are sinister people. I think we should have professional lobbyists. Instead of, you know, because professional demonstrators, shit. Stupid, because you've got this idea of professional demonstrator, big office block, canary wharf, someone walking around with braces going, CND, you want to book me Thursday? <laughs> OK, I'll be there, but I'll be flying in from the Kurdish demo, OK? Margaret, will you get the dog on a string out the dry cleaners? It's needed. <laughs> now, meanwhile, we've talked to Channel 4 again, and God bless them, they've said, all right, everyone wants to put it on the internet, go on then. 
And tonight, for the first time ever in the history of the show, we're going to break the law. I know you're going, yeah, like fuck. <laughs> but it is. This is the first time ever we're going to break the law. This is where it goes up. This is, uh, as you can see, this is the website address. Can we put the address up so everyone can see it very quickly? www.mepsinterests.com <laughs> We have actually we have actually got another one uh, registered, which is www.rmepsonthemake.com. <laughs> but Channel 4 said, no, you shouldn't really use that. So here we go. We're going to try and put it up here. This is, this is actually, it should be downloading. I've just pressed the download button. If you can bung that up there, then we can have a look through. And um, here we go. This should be nice. Now, listen, I want people, this is a thing that I want you to do while it just loads up. Tell your mates it's up there. Use the Jacques Pousse theory. Okay, phone a friend. You know people on the continent. You know people who talk French or Portuguese. Wonderful, we we'll bung it up. You know all these people, okay? And we'll do a little search in a minute. Talk to them. Tell them to check the register of members' interest, then go home or look up in company's house and find out which MEPs are not declaring properly. Because, I swear to God, I will give 500 quid to the first person that brings me the head of an MEP. <laughs> Let's have a look. I'll tell you what we'll have a look at. Um, what was that? Surname Evans. Surname Evans. Okay, let's have a look. Surname. Okay, let's see what he's got. Oh, look, he's the National Adv he's Advisor for the Union of Teachers, League Against Cruel Sp Sports, got his parking pass from BA Heathrow, comp tickets to Wembley. <laughs> let's have a look at Jonathan. Let's see, we've got here. Oh, solicitor for the Supreme Court, Eversheds. Chairman of working groups, North American London Market Insurance Companies. Oh, hello, he's got a... Oh, fuck me. <laughs> oh, look, 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 look. Is it an uh, attended cricket match, Glamorgan versus Glove, tickets supplied by Benson and Hedges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. So there we go. Um, the Greeks are amazing because uh, you're supposed to abide by your national law when you're filling in these forms. And the Greek law says that all politicians have to write down in the register of members' interests exactly what property they own, where they live. Do they own a boat or a plane or indeed a car? They have to write all this stuff in there, which is amazing because only six out of the 25 Greek MEPs have handed in a form at all. Which is fantastic. We should be applauding the Greeks for this. Because that means they've elected 19 homeless bicyclists <laughs> as MEPs. That's fantastic. <laughs> do get on the site. Do have a look at it. And, and tell your mates to go and have a look at it. Remember, there's a £500 reward. I'm very pleased that um, Channel 4 have actually broken the law tonight. Um, <laughs> because this has set a legal precedent and in the new year we hope to be murdering Edwina Curry live on stage. <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers. Night -night. Mark's back next Wednesday night with more irreverent gags. Catch him at 11.15. And take note, you can link directly to the MEP's interest website via our own website. That's at channel4.com.